Before we get to this point, let me catch you guys up with everything that has happened so far. Sup guys, it's Nick here. In this series, I'm going to share my journey to develop a robot dog. I'm going to share everything from the hardware to the software and all the calculations I had to do to make it work. It all started from a few months ago, after watching a bunch of videos on quadruped robots online, I decided to make my own robot dog. So I began searching online for some components. I found this MG996R servo motor from China, which are pretty strong for its price, so I got 12 of them. Then I needed a way to control all of them individually. To do that, I found this 16 channel servo motor driver, which uses the PCA9685 chip. With this module, I can generate 16 different PWM signals simultaneously. So finally, all I needed was a microcontroller to control everything. Right? Wrong! The microcontroller that I'm gonna use is the Arduino Uno, and the maximum current that you can draw from its 5 volt pin is only around 500 milliamps. Each of the servo motor requires 500 milliamps to 900 milliamps to operate, and their store current is rated at 2.5 amperes each. So, if for some reason all of the motors are stored at once, which is pretty unlikely, I will need a power supply that could handle a maximum current draw of 30 amperes. Under normal circumstances, I will only need around 6 to 12 amperes, but that is also too much to ask from an Arduino Uno. So, to overcome this, I could use a LiPo battery which has a very high discharge capacity. However, in the initial stage of this project, I didn't want to deal with the hassle of taking care of a LiPo battery. So instead, I'm going to use this power supply that I transformed from an old ATX. Its 5V rail is rated at 22 amperes, which is perfect for this project. If you want to see how I made this, check out my previous video, link is in the description. So with all the electronics ready, I started to design a body for the dog. As you can see, at first, I didn't really understand the rules of Fusion 360, which resulted in this corrupted file. But this design was a failure either way. I printed a few parts and it was literally impossible to assemble it. At that time, I was quite new to 3D printing and I didn't know what was possible to print and assemble. I also didn't even know how to use ball bearings. Yeah, I was that bad. After some experiments and testing later, I had a clearer idea of what was feasible and so, I started to design again. And here is the completely printed and assembled dog. So the hardware is basically done. In the future, I'll add more components for it to be wirelessly controlled. But for now, let's get into the software part. To control the servo motors with this module, I downloaded the Adafruit PWM servo driver library. I'll link it down in the description below. Next, I included the wire.h library since this module uses the I2C communication protocol. With the library included, pin A5 and A4 of the Arduino Uno will function as SCL and SDA respectively. The calculations below will involve trigonometry, so I included the math.h library as well. This part, I basically modified the sample code found in the library based on my servo motors. Next, I created an array for all the initial positions of my servo motors. To code the movements of the dog, I will implement something called the inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematics is a technique to obtain the required motion of a system of connected objects to reach a known position. To understand this better, let me give you an example. Let's say right now, I want to move my dog's torso up. Without inverse kinematics, I will have to specify each of these angles myself. But with inverse kinematics, I will only have to specify the distance between the dog's torso and the ground. To implement the inverse kinematics for this movement, I'm going to use the cosine rule. So with three given sides of a triangle, we can calculate each of the angles. Since the length of the humerus and legs of the dog is fixed, all I have to do is throw the formulas into the program, specify the distance c, and it will return all of the angles and move the servos accordingly. So let's try it out. I have written the codes, so let's upload it and turn it on. 
Right now, the distance between the torso and the ground is set to 150mm. So if I decrease the value, the body should move down. And if I increase the value, the body should move up. And I also should be able to move the torso up and down like this. So here's where we are at so far. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave me a like and subscribe and share it with your friends. In the next video, I'll be implementing the inverse kinematics for all of the other movements. So I'll see you soon and stay safe.